Okay. We start having a bit of an audience right now. Thank you very much for joining. Um, so, feeling a bit restless. A little bit restless. Uh, it's been a few very busy weeks on the on the hospitable front, uh, both internally and externally, to be honest. Um, so yeah, we've been busy, and hopefully we're going to be able to show something for it. Uh, and we definitely can announce uh, a few initiatives and a few uh, updates uh, to our products. Um, so it seems that they're basically... To, we, I'm not exactly spending my time on Clubhouse. Probably I should. Uh, but so it seems that basically now you, uh, there is a new feature on Clubhouse called Replays. So this room is being recorded so that you can listen and share the room with others after it has ended. So that is great. Uh, I think definitely that should be now uh, Clubhouse's responsibility to tell you uh, that this is being recorded. So we will be able to share the recording of this tunnel as usual on the support center on support documentation. Uh, there is a section specifically called Town Halls uh, where you can access a previous uh, episodes. Uh, that's the 13th Town Hall uh, so far to date, and there will be many more in the future. Um, some uh, particular updates from us. Um, uh, bit early. So, um, yeah, customer satisfaction, we noticed, is very, very up. Uh, so we actually achieved, I think, a record uh, in all history since we started tracking that number for uh, the previous the week of November 7th to November 13th, where we had an NPS, a net promoter score of 89. So typically considered above 75 is really going to be a world-class product that makes customers very happy, where customers are far more likely to be promoters, ambassadors of products. So that's something that really uh, was appreciated. Um, this week, it, seems, it looks like it's definitely going into the same direction. And we're adding upwards of 70. So I believe Thanksgiving is having an impact. People are happier um, because they also simply are going to be joining uh, their families. Hopefully, that should make you happy. Um, and uh, yeah, that also is kind of a, a different mindset that that is changing. There's a lot of suspicion that there is a background move. Product has changed, and we definitely are happy about it, but um, <laughs> not that much. Uh, not like uh, half much uh, satisfaction uh, for our customers. Um, second thing uh, that is happening internally, uh, so we are really spending a lot, I'm spending a lot of time on onboarding marketing people left and, uh, and right. Um, so the, what we want to do here is really investing significantly more into our, into our brand, into our image uh, with customers, and then checking really what it means uh, in terms of website traffic, in terms of customer acquisition, customer education, as we are, uh, I think, a third of our, uh, I mean, I, don't, I think, I know, uh, that about 30% of our trials are actually coming from hosts that are just new Airbnb hosts. Uh, so there needs to be a significant investment into making sure from our side, I believe, uh, to making sure that they can, um, they are informed into what it means. Um, and so we have basically been partnering with two agencies. Uh, you will see their works um, in your in an email inbox near you on, the social media, on our social media channels. Uh, so we'll be working with Flying Cat Marketing, uh, that is a content marketing agency. <clears throat> and we're really looking forward to working with them. They are and they will help us working on uh, upping the game for a content marketing strategy and working on great content that will be exposed on our blog and shared on our channels. Um, that's something that we that was always on the agenda, but we've been, now that we have really executed on change of name, you may have noticed that really we are hospitable if you didn't know. Um, so now we really want to push uh, a lot into SEO, into, into gaining more organic website traffic. And Flame Cat Marketing is really fantastic about it because uh, they have a great industry experience. They actually have focused and they've been helping other businesses in the short-term model and short-term model software uh, industry. And they are really, their, their quality, their content is really top quality. So we're looking forward to be working with them. Uh, another agency, Savion Ray, based in Brussels in Belgium. And they will be really focused on engaging uh, with our customers because we have actually have two funnels in this company and that's a bit insane. We can have, you know, visitors of our website that then convert into active customers. And we definitely, that's the 
there is no new marketing agency and that there is already something and we have invested a lot of time and I thought it to that and we still do. But there is also, once you are a customer, you need to be, and we want you to be engaged with a company, with a product. So being educated about the product features, uh, but also, you know, up to getting you to a point where maybe you want to invest into, into a company. Um, and we actually have some great news about that. Um, that's not something that we're shouting on the mountain top because that's uh, pretty organic and relatively low effort for us. But to this point, we have raised $140,000, a bit more, uh, from 21 customers. And there are actually more that are coming. So we're waiting for basically some uh, their funds to be received um, so that we can add them to the account. So I'm confident that we'll be reaching very close to $150,000 by the end of the week. Um, if you want to become an investor yourself into Hospitable, you can actually create your account on invest.hospitable.com. Uh, so back to the marketing, just something I wanted to say is that you will see that work, for example, in terms of doing our newsletter. So we couldn't send one this week for that very reason, but we'll be sending you a new one, a next one. So it's scheduled on mid-December. That will be a very busy one, we hope. Uh, you will also see that work in terms of product updates, in terms of managing a social media channel. And what we're very much looking forward to is really more community management. So that's just, you know, we are a product, but and a SaaS product, but there is also a large user base. We are going to be touching 5,000 customers. And there is probably a lot of things that the community can do for you. Um, we're thinking, you know, having job boards when you are recruiting for someone or looking for a job yourself. Uh, uh, exchanging tips, exchanging best practices about how you're configuring your accounts, what kind of messages do you want to send and what is the tone that you're using. And that's not something that really as a business is really something that we can support, but the community can do that. And we can be a focal point for a lot of property owners, real estate investors that basically want to self-manage their properties and simply exchange around, uh, around, their, around their experience. So that is really something I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, one last thing, and then we'll be touching on the segment that you will love uh, with our dear Nikita, um, is basically recruitment. Uh, so we have a VP of engineering, a VP of vice president of engineering, and that's touching the end of the process. So we're hoping to have an update on that very soon. Uh, I have a great, we have a great candidate I'm very excited about on a technical support role. So really like doing the mo solving the most complex tickets that are escalated to our support team. The next town hall, uh, we'll see the introduction of our head of support, uh, Zachary, who is based in Tampa, Florida. We announced that on the last town hall. And honestly, we're going to recruit left and right in 2022. We're just going to take December to really focus on documentation, documentation and onboarding. Uh, because the reality is that our business is really doing very nicely, too nicely, to be honest, to a point where not hiring more is a fault. Uh, we have profits of fifty thousand dollars on the past thirty days. Uh, so for us, that's about that's about ten jobs really that could be created within the business. While we have currently twenty, um, and the fundraising from customers. In addition to that, uh, we passed one hundred forty thousand dollars, meaning that we have actually at this point in time we have four four hundred thousand dollars. So for some of you, it's basically yeah, fine. For us, that's really we wish our, our job, my job is going is going to, is getting that to zero. Uh, so there is a lot of work that's going to be coming. Uh, the, the reason we want to wait a bit is that this is a very high level of effort. Process needs to be continuous and we need to be to be okay in doing so. So working on onboarding and documentation is really, yeah, the, the, I think really the best usage of my time uh, at this point in time. So yeah, great business to be in. <laughs> money, plenty of problems, business, money is not one. It's not one of them. Um, now, Nikita, how are you doing? Doing fine. <clears throat> so let's uh, let's move on to the product updates uh, over the last few weeks. Mm. So I'll talk about direct first because uh, I know a lot of people uh, are tuning in specifically for that. Uh, a few um, changes and improvements. <clears throat> so first, the uh, the calendar, both the widget on on the on every property uh, page, as well as the dedicated booking, booking form. So the calendar there now respects your minimum length of stay and availability that is check-in and check-out day rules, which means that uh, any, any, anyone looking at the calendar and clicking on a date to select the range, uh, the calendar will adjust based on those rules. So if they, uh, if, if for example, the entire next week is open, 
and your minimum length of stay rule is for three nights, as soon as they click one, uh, they, they click a day on, say, uh, Monday, checking out on Tuesday won't be possible, right? So the, so the calendar dynamically adjusts based on your existing minimum length of stay and availability, availability. it's hard to say, rules. Um, so that's one, one of them. Next, you can now uh, alter and cancel direct bookings uh, inside the hospitable web application. Um, we, when we kind of did the beta launch uh, a few weeks ago, that was one of the things missing. We, we knew <laughs> we knew that we were launching without it. We just wanted to get the first flow uh, feedback, so actually making those uh, booking requests. Now you can go in, not, not only like accept and, and reject the booking requests, but you can actually also alter and cancel the actual bookings as well. <clears throat> I mean, it, it, this was expected. Uh, we're just filling in kind of the, the gaps at this point. Uh, just ongoing improvements as well uh, across the board for for um, direct sites. Um, there are a bunch of smaller ones, but I'll just highlight some. So a fix for hero banner images not being uploadable. Uh, we have some better uh, error and validation messages when you're kind of creating sites, setting up domain names, and so on. Uh, the missing photos on the front page. In the vast majority of cases, that issue should now be fixed. If you're still experiencing that after um, checking out your site and then refreshing, uh, do let us know. Uh, there might be some some specific scenarios with data not being synced correctly, but for the most part, that should now be fixed. Um, and uh, I think on direct uh, updates, that that's it for now. But we're obviously continuing to to fix any things that come in to make improvements. We know uh, a lot of you have reached out about um, making changes to the site content and, and visually, like for example, the very bottom uh, about us section, for example, changing the styling, moving it all together, changing the way the text appears there. We're taking note of all of that feedback. Uh, we're just having to prioritize some things over others, but we'll, we'll eventually get to all of it in one form or another. So hang in there and do keep sending us your feedback. So moving away from direct, now, uh, Reservation Sync, so our, our product that uh, keeps your calendars uh, aligned when bookings come in. So I book uh, a guest books on, on my um, Airbnb listing. I want my verbal listing to be blocked off for those specific dates, right? That's Reservation Sync if, you're not, if you haven't used it yet. We have traditionally, well, traditionally for the last three years since Reservation Sync has lived, uh, only work on accepted bookings and cancellations and alterations. Uh, we have this morning rolled out booking requests that's well overdue, but it's finally uh, in place. So booking requests will also be a part of sync, reservation sync moving forward, which means anyone um, requesting to book on uh, any of your listings, the dates will be blocked off on all the other uh, listings and platforms until um, it's either canceled or, or it times out or, or declined, right? So it works just like with, with normal bookings. That's just one one more missing piece that we that we filled in. Moving away from that, more performance improvements on the calendar, inbox, and dashboard. You might have seen just a little bit more snappier, more more responsive interface over the last week or so. Um, uh, we've just sped a few more things up and uh, less network uh, resource usage as well. But we've now reached the point of diminishing returns. Uh, spending more time on, on performance improvements can be a thing, but it's not worth our time at this point anymore. Uh, we know that there might be some some scenarios still where customers experience maybe some more seconds of, of loading time that we would like. We, we're aware of those, but we're leaving them uh, in the background for now uh, because we have more pressing things to do. Like, for example, working, on, working even more on direct and in particular payments in direct which is uh, something that Ben and Sam from our engineering team will be diving deep into. Uh, I have a call with them tomorrow morning, actually, on that front. Uh, one thing I, I do want to note is uh, over the last week, we've had a couple of issues with our legacy, so our old Airbnb integration. Uh, if you've, if you've uh, signed up as a customer in the last I don't know, month, month or two, you probably don't even know what this is, uh, and you shouldn't care, but we have, uh, for the last four or five years, have had had a particular integration with Airbnb that was unofficial, in air quotes, uh, not really recognized as an official partner. That changed over the summer, uh, as some of you in this uh, town hall will know. Uh, 
but we still have to temporarily support the old integration while uh, remaining customers on that connection move over to our new integration and another note on that in just a minute but uh, what i was saying is that we've had a few issues with that old integration that we still have to support uh one data source just was removed um on their being this front uh, a particular data point changed in structure uh, that created pretty big issues in our database so long story short uh, sometime, basically a few days went to, to getting those things fixed and making sure there's um, product uh, operations continuity for customers on that integration. So things do come up that uh, occasionally take our time that where we wouldn't really want them to. But uh, the other thing I wanted to say on that front, uh, related to it, um, we're moving f forward on, uh, at a good pace now with our upgrade plan for from the legacy Airbnb integration into our new integration. Uh, and it's now going to be on a self-serve basis. So customers who are not yet on the new integration will see a banner, will see the option to upgrade their account without reaching out to support and without um, kind of being triggered into that flow with, with, with the connection issue, which, is, which is, has been the case for the last few months. So it will be self-serve moving forward, but um, there will come a time within the next few months where uh, basically we, we intend for all customers to, to have moved over to our new integration so we can stop supporting the old one and have less and less issues to worry about on that front. Last thing that I will mention is about Schlage. It's about to be released. That's all I'll say. Maybe Pierre can add some more words. Maybe Christian can add some more words. He's also on the call. But uh, yeah, Schlage is just about ready. Final tests uh, are being done, and it's about the, that integration is about to be released. Whew, I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, just some, some highlights for the people that have just uh, just been joining. Uh, so we're still working on direct very busy on that, fixing the bugs that have been escalated. There is a lot that was done already by the team uh, on, on it. So, aero banner, missing photos, altering and cancelling direct booking reservation, and uh, a more reliable uh, calendar that takes into account all your availability rules. Still uh, spending a bit of time on improving the performance, so making sure that you know everything is working. But what, what has been top of mind, really, uh, for the team is really everything related with Airbnb. So for example, yeah, we, we had that pro uh, problems uh, really with Airbnb legacy, as we are going to call it now. Um, and yeah, the, the problem that we have is that we have to support it and we'll do our best effort to, to support it to basically make sure that our customers uh, have a bit more time to be able to migrate to Airbnb official. But for us, uh, the, uh, there, are, there is simply too much to gain from the Airbnb official integration, but basically we need to make sure that progressively people are going to be moving into that direction. So we want to make sure that the timing is right uh, for everyone, but the direction is pretty clear. Uh, and there are compelling advantage, uh, we believe, for customers to be moving to it, like real-time messaging, uh, significantly greater support from Airbnb, uh, like Airbnb Inc., on making sure um, that uh, you know the operations are working reliably um, whether that's coming from, you know, messaging or calendar or, or listings uh, in particular. So that's going to be key for all the elements that we are moving uh, moving towards. Uh, so including, for example, directs, the direct, uh, direct products in particular. Schlage going to be released quite soon. We already have put the little, uh, little logo on it on the apps page. Uh, I think we just need to wait a little bit more time to ensure that we test it end to end um, before opening it up to more users. Uh, that are on a beta uh, channel, so people that have um, that have agreed to be uh, receiving uh, uh, experimental uh, features. Uh, so we'll be releasing that slowly. We really want to make sure that this is we're going to be working nicely first, uh, because we kind of want to take our, our responsibility seriously on on this front. Uh, and yeah, so moving forward also with the Airbnb upgrade. So I think that's it for now on the company and product updates. Um, we'll be moving with the Q&A. So some people have already raised uh, their hands and that's perfect. Uh, we can answer any question uh, that you have about the product. If there is anything in particular about direct that has not been touched on already, or in particular with the Airbnb upgrade to the Airbnb official integration, I'm happy to spend 
uh, sometime in particular to clarify any kind of questions that you may have. Um, if you are a bit on the shy, on the shy side, uh, you can also ask a few questions uh, anonymously uh, if that's uh, your mood. So you can go on to slido.com, slido.com, S-L-I-D-O.com, and then type hashtag hospitable to be joining a page uh, where you can ask, uh, ask a question. And as basically these questions are coming along, I will also uh, answer uh, them. So, okay, let's go with, I think the first one was Quant Investors. That's great. Uh, and we will have Linda a little bit later uh, for any kind of questions. Hopefully that's working. Uh, I think I'm a there's moderator, been... by the way, I can't see any. Uh, you are not a moderator. I'm going to promote you into a moderator. Good. Uh, yeah. So you can do that. So we've invited Quant Investor, who is not responding just now. I'm going to invite Linda. Uh, who is a uh, usual guest of the channel? So, are you doing Linda this week? <laughs> just had a question about direct bookings because yes. I was getting problems with the server every time I try to do my Belize properties. So, I didn't know if you knew about that. Um, I can, I just did for all my Canadian properties, and it seems to work right. So, I don't know if there's anything about different countries that are a challenge, and I just wanted to hear if you know about that or not. Uh, not off the top of my head, but mm -hmm. if it works for some of your properties but not others, it, that tells me it's something. And it's, it's the same site or different sites? Sorry. Yeah, I have uh, different sites. So basically, I want to. I have a website already created for my uh, properties in Canada, and I just yeah. went in right now because I just thought of trying it because I kept trying to. I only wanted to do my Belize properties because I already have a separate PMS system for all my Edmonton properties, and I just hadn't put my Belize ones in because I thought it'd be great to test Smart B and B yeah. in comparison to my other PMS for the two different countries. But Smart B and B is not working, so I'm trying to figure out. Um, I thought, well, I'll just try the Canadian ones, and that one I just was able to preview. I just did it literally right now, and it, it does work. Uh, while we're on the channel, I'll look into your account and try just try and see if I spot anything. But uh, off the top of my head, no, I don't know. Um, usually, it's on a case by case basis. So like uh, I'd ask you to to reach out to support if I don't manage to find anything by the end of this time hole. Yeah, if you find something great, and I, I had already reached out to support, I guess. Okay. About a week and a half ago to say this wasn't working, but now I just realized All right, it's uh, only those properties, and I hadn't heard anything back, so that's why I thought I would just ask right now. Oh, no, super. Yeah, th thanks, Linda, for, for, uh, for raising me here. Um, uh, I'm going to take a look. Yeah, I think uh, you, just to be clear, Linda, you know, you're authorizing, because I'm on your account right now. I see that you have uh, basically uh, West and Benton rentals. Uh, I'd... Okay, so we just need to create a new site uh, for the uh, for the Belize property, I think, right now. Yeah. Okay. So Nikita will create a, a website for your uh, for your Belize property and see if there is any no problem. Okay. <laughs> uh, and yeah, we have received definitely a lot. Of, uh, of things uh, about uh, about Durex, so a lot of feedback. Uh, you know, there can be bug reports, there can be issues. That is basically being addressed progressively. Uh, so we'll be reaching out to you when that's uh, the problem. It's really the kind of thing where it's uh, it's actually we feel it better better to have some kind of mass management uh, on those, those kind of tickets in particular. Thank you, Linda. I, um, is that all for you today? <laughs> that's it. Perfect. Thank you. I'm um, Quant Investor is not here. We're gonna have Sean uh, next to join us if we can get him to. Hello, Sean. How are you doing? Hey, how's it going, guys? Hope y'all are doing well. Um, doing fine. Doing fine. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations on all the progress so far. Um, you know, again, always super impressed with y'all, and really appreciate all you do. Um, quick question about the, you know, the calendar widget for whenever that gets done. I was curious if there's going to be any way where whenever people select dates, it'll automatically do the math and calculate 
how much that booking will be like with cleaning fee and all that stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. So <laughs> almost every single person is asked that we, we probably should have like documented in some way. Yeah. That is of course going to be there. Uh, we never intended to, that to be just a blank, uh, kind of blank screen where somebody just adds dates and, and off they go. No, of course fee calculations will be part of it. We're getting there. Yeah. Uh, I okay. think that the, the, the problem is that really is, is simply cannibalizing stuff. So basically, there, there is something on the back end that needs to be done to simply t calculate the price. And that's not just, you know, so that's taking into account the markdown rates that you have on your properties. Um, that is taking into account any kind of fees that you may have set up on your Airbnb listing. So those obviously will be, will be adding up. There is definitely going to be a, a, what is going to be working, whether you are processing your own payments under your own Stripe account, or which basically you want hospitable to be a merchant of record. So there are multiple layers of complexity based on that. And that, that's going to be coming, obviously, in relation uh, with the booking flow that we're, that we're having. So there, there is definitely going to be steps to, to, making, to making that happen. But that's definitely, obviously, what you see right now is just really an MVP starting a request to book and getting you to create a reservation and there's been enough bugs <laughs> for us to be, to be busy for, uh, for for two weeks on fixing that. So definitely next new feature is definitely is really going to be presenting you with a quote um, and more reliably, especially because of the integration for taxis, for, for example. So taxis is really, I uh, mean, you know, the price, very complex question, actually. <laughs> awesome. Well, that, that all sounds great. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it and glad the calculations will be done. Uh, one other question, I brought it up a couple of weeks ago and just curious if you had looked into it at all, is the property names for VRBO, whenever they get sent, like VRBO added like the address after whatever we called the property. I was just wondering if there's any way to switch it to where Smart BNB pushes the property nickname that I've set, you know, in Smart BNB. I, I think I saw that, and I, def I definitely remember you saying something about, of that sort. I, I don't think we've done anything about it just now. Uh, it doesn't seem like a lot of users uh, are impacted by, by that kind of problem. And yeah, unfortunately, we're a bit hijacked by uh, some problems uh, with Airbnb, the Airbnb legacy integration. Uh, so we will, uh, yeah, I think we, we go back to this whenever we can. Is that something that you know, guests that is impacting the communication with uh, with your guests in particular? Well, the main thing for me is I use Zapier to push a lot of things. Okay. And I have the filter set up to the property nickname that I, you know, that I list in VRBO, in Airbnb, and in Smart BNB, but they're all the same. But for whatever reason, VRBO is adding a little extra content that are adding the address afterwards. And that's causing the filter not to fire. And so that means so you... like certain calendar things aren't showing up right. Certain messages aren't showing up right. Is there like a separator, like a little dot uh, in the middle of it or something? Yeah, it's it's the property name I set, dash, and then they put in the street name, like the address and the street right. name. And that just, you know, came out of nowhere like three weeks ago. Okay, I'm, I'm just taking it. So I'm curious, if you have a Zapier integration, is that based on webhooks? That's... Yeah, it starts with the webhooks and then, you know, goes. And you. And you're filtering based on the listing name? Yep. The, you, the, 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 whatever the nickname is, not the listing name, but whatever I've set it as like the property nickname in Smart BNB. Yeah, so, the, oh, no, but it, it, even then there, there, there is a webhook that should basically be take that webhook attribute that she's property name. And so that should be taking the property name exactly as it is that you've configured. So it's not impacted by any kind of change on Verbo. Um, yeah, for uh, whatever reason, just a few weeks ago, it started adding that okay. extra part of the address. And, you know, because I have certain properties that are really similarly named, you know, because no, it's a little yeah. bit different, you know. It's... Okay, so I'm, I'm sure you've looked into that. I have not. <laughs> so I will look into that. Uh, and I'm sure that there is something. You just basically, I, I, I'm thinking that if there was a way you could you, to use really the property name and if it's based on webhooks, that the property name should be trusted to really only include the hospitable uh, proper property name. And so that property name is not to be affected by anything in relation to variable. So either it's a bug, uh, so it's something that we are not taking into account on the variable that has changed recently, or it's a bug on our side because the property name is not reflecting accurately. So it's 
maybe one of those two things. Um, so I, I think the, the fastest path to resolution may be to check on another webhook attribute if that's something specific that's happening to you. Um, so yeah, I, I will I will look into that uh, if I can under your account a bit a bit later. Um, okay, perfect. Check Appreciate things it. out. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. And we're having plenty of questions on Slido, so thank you very much uh, for the uh, for the things. Uh, so, what kind of question will I will I answer first? Um, so, there is one question. Uh, have you thought about creating a Discord? So that's actually a question that I left from uh, from the last session that we couldn't get to. Um, have you thought about creating a Discord channel to report bugs and interact with you and provide feedback? Um, no, <laughs> <laughs> Discord actually is is uh, can get really chaotic. Uh, if anything, we prefer Slack. Uh, but even then, we we have experience with uh, previously with uh, with a like a, a, a small group of customers um, that we invited. Um, they actually were the, that, least, uh, the, the, the least well served customers yeah. of the entire group. Uh, so that, that actually that actually didn't work. Uh, I think the the main issue about reporting bugs is that you want to be able to follow up with users that have escaped something, and we have a great operation set up here on our site already. So it that actually would be a cost to us to basically go back to that, and I'm not sure exactly how that would work. Uh, so keeping users engaged and informed about improvements of, uh, of the product is, I think, really important. Reporting bugs is fine. We have really we have very little problems on, on the reporting bugs part. You could send us an email on support that is pitable. Problem is one, the capacity to solve it, and then the capacity to follow up with you when the problem has been resolved. Um, provide feedback. That is definitely something that's great. I, I think what I was saying earlier, um, that obviously was not known to by this customer or this person at this time, um, was really that we want to really go serious about community management, and there will be definitely more initiative going to the direction of making it super easy to provide us with feedback in public and really engage with other users, not really like making it a, a top-down like user to company, but also between users to exchange and, and find really a, a solution that can that can work for everyone. And that's honestly something I'm extremely uh, looking uh, looking forward to. Um, so huh. another question that's pretty interesting that I'm responding right now, and then we'll go to uh, to, uh, to another one uh, on the on stage. Uh, when will we see the dollar amount of inquiries? Um, so, right, because people are asking for questions about discounts or price, and it cannot be answered. I believe that question may be related with Airbnb. Nikita, are you familiar with that? Yeah. Uh, sorry, can you ask that again? I was looking at uh, with Linda on her account. Yeah, <laughs> you're debugging <laughs> direct live. So, yeah. is there a reason why we cannot show the direct, uh, sorry, the the, the, uh, the amounts of inquiries on uh, on the inbox? I believe uh, displaying the actual inquiry amount in the inbox. Yeah, for Airbnb, I'm not. I'm not sure. That's not specified. What I believe is the case here is um, that we don't have the number um so the, we, typically we have the oh okay okay yeah, that's yeah. you see where i'm going so i, I think that's a, that's a problem here is that um we are so there is really a i don't know exactly what the, what the status of the answer is uh to be honest because it's being a lot of back and forth uh with airbnb on this uh what we want to have is definitely for for them to be working on improving the transparency of their rates um, with uh, so that basically we know and the host can know and from an API fashion it's accessible to us we can know the total guest price that is being offered to them that they see and we can also see very early the subtotal amount uh, that is being offered to the guest and maybe ideally the, the payouts um, so if I'm not mistaken that simply is not something that is accessible to us as, a, uh, as an inquiry stage uh, but that's something that is on the roadmap on the Airbnb API, and so that's something that obviously we want to have uh, initially. And it's really a surprise to us that it's not something that exists already. If that is the if that is the case, 
Um, we can definitely go and find other ways to kind of uh, to kind of compute that because we do have your rates on a database. Um, but the the problem that we have, and that's really the clear stance, is really what exactly is the dollar amount? Uh, because that can be the total gas price. That's the price that honestly you can communicate to customers. But uh, the prices that typically we're having access to are the subtotal, which is actually nothing for you. Uh, the subtotal is the amount uh, that Airbnb will charge, for example, host services. Uh, so that can be 3%, that can be 15%, depending on, on, your, on your configurations. That number is, is, is different. Um, and so, you know, there are you know, users, for example, that are using that number and expecting, yeah, I'm going to get paid 800, but actually, no, you're going to receive 763. And there is no one actually understanding as to what exactly is, uh, is the discrepancy there. So what bottom line is that it's probably not something that we have access to right now. Um, that is something that we've asked several times uh, with Airbnb, and we believe that um, it, is on their, it is on their roadmap to provide more transparency progressively on, on the things. But as far as I, we can do, uh, the last thing is, yeah, we can find a, a temporary uh, solution, um, but that is definitely promising to be a bit heavy on terms of yeah understanding the fees and kept computing the amounts ourselves uh, based on the information that we have other than having a bit of certainty onto airbnb as to what exactly is the amount offered uh, from the from the inquiry um, so that is something that definitely should be looked at um okay i'm going to invite uh i believe mac and William to the stage. Well, they're coming on. Thank you. Update. We found the issue with uh, with Linda. <laughs> fixing that. <laughs> so you're fixing it. What was it? Uh, can you communicate? We, can you say yeah, it? Yeah, we, um, we didn't, uh, uh, or something. I don't know. Something messed up when when removing a past uh, domain on our uh, website provider. So it's still sitting in there, and so Linda cannot recreate it. Okay. So. Oh, so that's that's something that was that was okay. So. Um, that has nothing to do with Belize. <laughs> that's no. Here. no restriction. That is actually because, yeah, that, so that's something that may be affecting early users. Uh, accordingly, if you have created your website early and you cannot recreate it under the same domain that you that you wanted, um, you may not be able to recreate it. That's what Nikita is sharing. Um, so that's a bit broader than simply uh, Belize. Um, Mac, how are you doing today? I am fantastic. How are you guys? It's amazing to hear. I'm feeling fantastic just hearing your voice right now. Not that I, anyone I, before you was not as making me feel fantastic, but really, that's great. We saw the bug right now. That's very that's <laughs> um, no, you, guys, you guys are, uh, I was just like telling everybody that I know, just my wife, how, <laughs> how great of a company you are, uh, to, to, to be able to tune in and listen to you guys, and it's exciting, so I just... Uh, because I, I, I rolled out the website, you know, this past week, and it was important for my company to, to show the property. So I'm just grateful that you guys have been transparent and delivered. So I'm excited to, to watch, it, uh, like, the previews, too. I was going to say, like, how you guys kind of are progressively making it better. Are you guys going to continue the preview part where you kind of allow us to see what it could be in the future type of thing? Or is that going to be kind of decommissioned? Um I'm not sure what, you, what you mean. So, you like, so what, to, what the plan is, Mac, um, we're going to continue building in public, so progressively adding features and making everyone kind of aware of what's happening uh, just as, as we go. We'll reach a point where we're happy with the product and we're ready kind of to launch it on the, in a paid capacity so it becomes a paid product. But even at that point, we're still going to allow people to um, create preview sites like they do now uh, to preview what it would look like before actually committing, um, which is, which is uh, different to what uh, others in the space are doing. Um, so hopefully that answers both questions. Yes, we'll, we'll continue building in public. And yes, even at the point where, where this becomes a paid product, um, you'll still be able to see what you will get before actually having to have it to subscribe for it. Sounds awesome. I, I think it was just pretty cool that you guys delivered. So like, I, um, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I had a couple questions I wrote down. Uh, what is the Good. other one? Um, Stripe a connection to my account um, is is that currently active? I might have missed that earlier. Like, do I connect? I have a Stripe account, but do I 
at what point will I connect it so people can book directly again? I've missed that. Yeah, um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer for Nikita while he's basically fixing that bug. Um, so that is really what's coming next for us. Um, so we have the ability right now to create a thread, uh, getting the automation set up. If um, uh, if you have a request to book coming from your direct uh, booking website, the next part is really going to be adding processing payments and building all the kind of integration that we have kind of um, announced already in terms of making two distinct offerings. So either you connect your Stripe account, and in that case, you will be the one processing the payments. Uh, and if you want to have additional services, you're going to have to reach out to them and connect them uh, and connect that, or connect that yourself. If um, the other offering that we are going for is a premium offering, uh, not marketing, uh, no, no marketing person has touched that term yet. Um, but that really is more like uh, you, you, is that like using hospitable as an OTA, so that we are the one being the merchant of record. We don't have you don't have to process chargebacks. Uh, we'll be in the, we'll be adding more payment methods. And what you need to do is actually doing a bit of a KYC check. So. Uh, uploading a selfie, uploading a passport, that basically we can create a merchant account uh, for you, but you don't have the liability for it. And we believe that is kind of middle ground between having an OTA uh, that is in charge of everything, including the marketing, but they own your customer, and having a direct booking website, which typically is like raw naked, you have to do everything yourself. Um, and there is, it's very hard to kind of go into there. So we, what we want to do here is offering kind of middle ground solution where we, as a platform, we take care of all the trust and compliance elements. So that goes from understanding who your customer is, ensuring you against damages from that customer. That is really having a tax rate that is relevant for your jurisdiction, for your county, for your city, um, and ensuring that we facilitate you operating a, a short-term rental sustainably. So you will be able to connect your Stripe account if you want to, but that will mean that you're falling into this kind of form, the, the form of offering. So really uh, the one where you want to take responsibility for everything. And that do not believe that's the case for everyone. Now you mentioned that you were working, you were having a company. So you're probably gonna be a property manager. In that case, uh, you can go for that uh, air quotes basic uh, offering where you are the one taking responsibility for everything. Uh, uh, and it's up to us to demonstrate really more value uh, with the, the premium type offerings so where we take care of all the trust and compliance. And the product of direct bookings really is reservation income. It's the money that is getting paid on your account reliably uh, and by enforcing your terms uh, nonetheless. So that's the middle ground. So connecting Swap accounts should be coming in the coming weeks, <laughs> provided Airbnb is not you know, having a tampon on traumatized or something. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> that's a technical word. Go ahead, Mike. What do you feel about this? That's fantastic. And sounds good. I, I appreciate that. I, I'm sorry if you had to repeat yourself, but uh, that's, no that's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Like everything is easier now on me to to share to share with the world. So I appreciate it. Um, the last question, sorry, William. Um, I got an email. <laughs> from, I got I got an email from a company by the name of DAC. Um, I'm curious if you guys are now integrated with them um if not you don't have to talk about it now i'm not sure i i just received an email that they're integrated now with their pms because i've been kind of working on uh, uh, something with them in auto host to then integrate i didn't realize they were going to be integrating with uh your company and that was something i i didn't actually have a conversation with but i was planning to use dac um i think a couple others in this room might use dac but do you have any information on on that or is that too early to share I do believe that John has been has been an advocate of that uh, a bit privately. So I, I will, no offense, please, but I uh, I took a bit of time maybe to kind of understand what this is about. Um, so I, the, we have an open API. Anyone that wants to integrate with us can integrate with us. There really has never been a particular challenge about it. Um, so that that's basically what I would say. What I would say about it at this point. As far as I know, we don't have an integration with them, but that's really up to them <laughs> to, to reply. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Mac. Um, William. Hello. How are you good, doing? Good, good. Good afternoon. Um, two questions. One, I started the Airbnb um, 
transfer from the uh, legacy to the new integration. But how do I know if I successfully completed it? I'm sorry for my ignorance, <laughs> but I'm not sure if I did it properly or not. <laughs> Uh, basically, if, the, if when you went to uh, connect your Airbnb account and you saw uh, a screen that says Smart BNB is asking for permission to access your account and kind of this is what mm -hmm. they're asking for, that means that yes, you, you've used the new integration and as long as you're now seeing your reservations and, and conversations, then everything's gone. Okay, because okay. next when, when I go to connected accounts next to Airbnb, it says two um, and I only have one at this time. Uh, two listings. Yeah, and that's why I thought maybe I have both running. No, no, no. I mean, I, uh, I, if, I, if, you, if there's two and you expect one, that means you probably have a hidden listing that you either are not aware of or, or, or forgot about. Um, because <laughs> that's a number of listings that we actually created from, from your account. Yeah, okay. um, the, the, the trick actually, I mean, I, I don't know exactly what Nikita is going for, but my trick is simply to, to go on the connected accounts and the Airbnb uh, official accounts do mm -hmm. not have the email address associated with them. It's just your first name. Oh, okay. um, so that uh, that is the case. Um, I okay. think that for me, that's a, the best way, the fastest way. That, that will change at one point. Huh? Uh, I've asked already that we have uh, some kind of a, la uh, of a label um, um, to, to basically differentiate between legacy and, and official because after we communicating, we, as we start communicating differently more, far more broadly about it, that's definitely one of the anxiety of, of our users is what exactly am I using and am I impacted by that? So that, yeah, if you have, if you don't have any kind of action uh, that needs to be taken on your connected account page, currently you're not concerned. If you are, you will be reached out to in the next few weeks. Um, so that's, uh, okay. that, that should be answering that problem. And hopefully you don't need to. Okay. So, yeah. I'll double check it. Thank you. And the other is I'm just starting a co-hosting venture. And what tools do you have within uh, Hospitable that would make it easier for me? One, one I'm thinking, is there a way to see how much revenue was collected for the month so I can invoice the, the owners? Good question. So that's the question of owners' dashboards, owner statements. Uh, so uh, that's you can run at this point in time a reservation export that will basically give you the amounts for each reservation across okay. all the, across all your channels. We okay. don't yet have an owner statement, owner's dashboard type features. Um, that's something that we've expressed multiple times. Thoughts of thoughts on. Um, so we want to provide an update for that for the first half of 2022 to give you a bit, uh, a bit of an update, if I may. Um, so um, that is actually the, the best way to make it happen. The thing that I want to raise uh, about co-hosting in particular, and that is the same for every kind of uh, product in that space, is that mm -hmm. Airbnb requires the listing admin uh, to be connected. Uh, you can connect the co-host business, you know, the co-host accounts in particular, if you want to. That's not not a problem, uh, but you still need to connect uh, the the listing admin. So the listing admin might be you, uh, if you are the one creating the listings on behalf of your clients, and then you give them access. Uh, mm -hmm. So that is something that uh, we feel is important, and that's why we're progressively rolling it out. Uh, for now, the uh, the first batch of release for Airbnb official is really for users that are already known to be listing admins, and therefore they should not be facing any particular problem with the integration. Um, so it, with the connection and with their operations, uh, we still want to keep on working on making sure um, that users we fetch, we, which are we are facing a more complex workflow that are co-hosted have more time uh, to be migrating uh, either to an Airbnb teams or to uh, to basically reach out to their to the listing admins to ensure that either they are invited to connect or they connected themselves by having access to the credentials, uh, which is also definitely something that, that can happen um, on some on some businesses. So okay. that's something uh, that yeah users that are concerned will receive an update on in the next few weeks. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mac and, and William. I'm going to go back to quickly to uh, to Slido. Um, 
Okay, I think I answered the question. Can you tell us where we can look on our account to see if we need to take action on moving ourselves from that legacy Airbnb integration? So um, check on the connected accounts page. If there is a green button called upgrade, click on it. But first, make sure that you're connected on Airbnb on the account that you want to connect. So if you have multiple Airbnb accounts, the process actually is uh, log, log out from your Airbnb, log into the Airbnb account that you want to connect, then click upgrade on Hospitable. Um, that's just something that's new. You will be receiving more direction on that uh, in the upcoming hours. Uh, hopefully, that's something that also we, are, we have as a banner uh, if, you are, if you are impacted. Um, okay. Um, and it seems like there are other customers that were having a problem. Okay. No, no, no uh, yeah. We, we'll see that later. Hello, Justin. Hello, Wayne. Who is the first, Nikita? Uh, well, I don't know. You, you guys inside. <laughs> Anybody. You guys hey. inside. Okay. It's gonna hey be there, this is fight. Justin. Hello, Justin. Hello, hey, Justin. Thanks, thanks for having me, and, and thanks for giving your users and business partners a voice in all of this. Um, I've got a, uh, a question. I've got a, um, a really beautifully designed Squarespace site, and I'm super keen to activate direct bookings on that. Um, I want to use that existing site and not have to create a parallel experience for my guests. When can I expect to be able to integrate your booking widget that kind of leads through the booking flow into that? And how do I do that? Later. <laughs> so I think right now we do not have a plan for the release of the booking widget uh, because simply we need to really ensure that we focus the resources on building their booking experience. Well, as soon as that booking experience is completed, we'll be able to release uh, the booking widget so that basically you will be able to embed on your own direct booking website that is not generated by Hospitable, having the same kind of calendar um, so that basically you can, you guys can check out the dates and then off you go and they can book on an Hospitable page um, and generate the, the conversations. So that, that requires for us to be the last thing. Uh, so that's the last thing that we'll be releasing uh, as part of it. That's a, that's the last milestone um, that we have. Uh, and that is the the next one is really having a booking a booking flow, a booking experience that works for websites. And then immediately after that, it's going to be releasing widgets. So, there. Is that a this year type of thing or a 2022 type of thing? What should I expect? The pro yeah, yeah, what should, should you expect? Um, if it's totally up to us, uh, I do believe that we can. When you get out, what can I say? It's a bit challenging. Uh... No, I, 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 look, the, the widgets themselves probably like early, early, early mid January, something like that. I think yeah. no, no earlier than that because like oh, December will be taken up, taken up by the by focus on the payments flow. Yeah, we need yeah. to do with payments. Focusing on the payments, and at the same time, we have to. Uh, do that Airbnb upgrade, uh, which is it's difficult to focus resources on net new features while we basically have to maintain obviously and migrate you know about four thousand customers um, to a, to a new integration. So that that's really is the is the, the part that really makes us a bit uh, a bit difficult for us to assess in terms of project management. Cool, um, I appreciate that. Thank right. you for the insights. And if you need a beta user, let me know. You are there. <laughs> Everyone is a better user, uh, and we'll still publish things in public as soon as we are, as they happen. Um, thank you, Justin, for that great question. Wayne, how can we help you today? Yes. Hello, Nikita and Pierre. Thank you for having me on. Um, I'm fairly new to the platform. I uh, enjoy it. Your support in chat is very good. I'm very hard hard on people sometimes uh, I, I just see things and I expect them to work now <laughs> and they do a great job uh, fielding all my questions and issues so on direct um, in, in regards to direct so I was under the assumption it wasn't even working at all yet because every time I run a test on it I get nothing on my end when I go in and pick dates and send in my requests I just get a no confirmation on the screen and I, and I get no information delivered to me but it sounds like people are actually using this. Is that correct? Yeah, it sounds like there's a, uh, either a calendar issue of some kind on uh, on, on your account. Um, but I have, have all. I'm sorry. Uh, I was just about to ask you. Have you reached out to support about this already? Um, because yes, if yes I it's, have. Probably, it's probably somewhere in the list. Um, 
Yeah. It's, it's on the list. I just yeah. wasn't sure if, uh, if it was. So there is. It is functioning. It's just probably something with my with my account. Okay. Um, uh, so I mean, yeah. The, the short answer is that, that should be working. So there's there's probably something yeah. uh, wrong in your particular case. Definitely right. And I also I also have a website created on WordPress. And what I've done is, if someone books through there, I just go into your tool and add the booking myself manually. I, I think that should be okay, right? To to achieve the communications uh, between me and the person who booked on my WordPress site. Yes, absolutely. That's uh, that's absolutely a working a good working flow. Okay. The problem is right now is that obviously you need to set things. Up. You need to manually do it. Uh, right. That's the, that's the part that really we are, we want to kind of sort out first uh, right. to ensure uh, that you can do. I'm checking your. And I don't even mind yeah. attaching the direct page to my WordPress. Like I could make it a tab, but not not until it works to where I can actually you know connect. Um, and then also one yeah. one question that hasn't been the topic at all, and and I hope not to take us too far off topic. But in operations, when I'm when I'm messaging like cleaning staff and whatnot um is there any plans for their their reply messages to actually come back via text instead of an email do you know what i'm saying so when i when i get a booking and it texts all my cleaning staff so i i have multiple cleaning staffs that i'm setting up and i'm texting them all to say hey who wants it and then when i confirm them and i'm just terrible so many expect yeah. it to pass through a text channel. Do you know what I mean? I, I think that definitely is a recurring thing that we're hearing from those from those town halls. Um, are you cleaners using WhatsApp WhatsApp or any kind of uh, messaging application of the same sort? Uh, not to my knowledge, but I can definitely because teach them. Honestly, you know. the, 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 problem that we, the problem that we have with SMS is that basically we are we are not connecting under your own phone number, and so we basically have to kind of route your SMS SMS that are sent to our number to your phone number, and that can get right. really messy. Uh, okay. So what I believe is really the realistic solution on this front, uh, and, and we cannot send a text message from your cleaner uh, under the phone under the cleaner's phone number, so there is no continuity of conversation. So right. what right. I do contemplate is actually more like have. Uh, and that really, to be clear, um, I'm keeping your hopes. I want to keep, make them manage, but there is there is no plan for for that at this point. Is that we uh, what what I would like to have is more like WhatsApp integration where we have a chat with you, your phone number, with hospitable phone number, and with uh, with your cleaner, so that you know when a message has been sent on our side. And they, you, that cleaner can reply on that same conversation with you that you that you have access to. I think that seems to me like a more uh, like an easier way to sort it out rather than basically figuring out uh, all the kind of complexity that you will have to manage anywhere on your side because you will interact with an hospitable phone number that should be linked to an individual cleaner. I, I, I that that sounds complicated for me. So okay. I think for me the solution is more like WhatsApp, Telegram, uh, those type of integrations, um, and including that into operations. But operations okay. is really going to be. Uh, I mean, what I would like to have is really 2022 would be um, uh, operations complete rebuilding uh, okay. and change of paradigm. So that's something different. But you know what? Okay. We can focus you, on the issue at stake today first. I understand. <laughs> If you want to add me to a, a beta team, that would be great. If you have a feature, I usually try to figure out how to use it and break it. So um, go ahead and put me on as a uh, beta tester, if you'd like. Uh, so, what we, do, we haven't mentioned this in a very long time, but uh, in your account settings, uh, <laughs> preferences rather, on Hospitable, there is an option you can toggle to be included in future beta releases. Okay. I probably already did it, so that's great. I'll, I'll double check that to make sure. I'm uh, really enjoying the product, and thank you guys for this setting up this forum. I think it's great and uh, really shows some amazing uh, leadership for the company. Thank you very much. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you, thank you Wayne. Thank you. Um, okay, I'm going to slide uh, to... Yeah, okay, I'm... Okay, uh, I think we have 
some questions on, on, on Slido, uh, but I think it's still basically about the same kind of dollar amount issue. Hello, Kent, what are you doing? Hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, great job with your product. I work in tech myself with machine learning engineers, data scientists, developers, and insurance industry. So I understand how much work you guys are going through. So great job, guys. <laughs> Um, Thank you. My question is regarding Thank to you. your product roadmap for direct. Uh, two of the biggest priorities for myself is actually sales and liability protection. So two of the features that drew me to your competitors, owner res and your porter, is that they offer promotion codes or promo codes and rental agreements that are automatically sent to direct booking guests to capture like their e-signatures or offer them discounts. Do you have promo codes on your product roadmap? Like, so we can provide to specific marketing channels, returning guests that can generate more sales. Uh, just curious, like where this sort of feature is along your product roadmap. Is this in Q1, 2022, first half, or is it not even on your product roadmap yet? I think to answer the specifics, I think definitely product promo codes were really something that was secreted pretty early. Um, it doesn't, mm. <laughs> that, that's something that we basically will readjust uh, based on the first quarter of 2022 uh, when we have uh, the, pr the payment processing workflows and we're able to do the offering that we would like. Mm -hmm. We are not very attached to individual features in terms of roadmap because it's really, we're going to do things very, quite differently. Uh, it's not just going to be pr the challenge for us is not particularly delivering you uh, a direct booking website and a template that you like and we definitely want to be doing that but the the other thing that is really kind of bridging the gap between an OTA uh, an OTA experience and a direct booking experience is the part that is relatively new to the industry and so we want to kind of make sure that we are checking our product market fit if you would like uh, before starting committing onto onto particular individual features what I would tell you is that definitely these promo codes in particular is definitely something that will be coming. Great. Um, there are features that we have in relation with, that we want to have in relation with premium or premium offering that definitely are pretty unique in the market, such as the ability to really go na directly have the guest verification or the identity uh, or mm -hmm. verification of your guest uh, with the ability to apparently process some security deposit and validate the guest credit, the mm -hmm. guest credit card, making sure that the location is completely aligned, making sure that they are not on, you know, crazy um, databases from uh, from law enforcement in particular. Mm -hmm. Ensuring that we have uh, an insurance workflow so that is going to be working because uh, direct bookings uh, from hospitable under the premium offering will be insured for. 1.3 million dollars at this point and i believe there will be updates after the release of the airbnb uh, updated uh, insurance protection uh, and to make sure that claims are working fine that we're able to really support our customers there um, and ensuring you know really the tax compliance and uh, and making sure that we can automate as much as possible in terms of the compliance of the of the fees being processed so that we can ensure sustainably once you get that kind of a foundation sure Promo codes, fine. You're promoting returning guests. That that's mm -hmm. is something that's going to happen organically because who exactly is going to be the first guest whose payment is processed? The, that is not already a customer trying things out. Is going to be a returning customer. It's going to be a returning mm -hmm. guest that is basically booking the booking website. So the first booking, re the first feature request is going to be a promo code. That's that's already programmed to to be happening. Okay. So, yeah. No, that's um, my, 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 if you want in terms of roadmap, my roadmap personally as a CEO <laughs> is to ensure that we can recruit around 30 people working exclusively on the bookings during 2022. So I was talking about 10 new jobs uh, on, uh, on the company that's organically, that's based on the actual product, on the current product. Um, we believe that we can have 30 people working by the end of 2022 on the product roadmap for direct exclusively so if you would like there's going to be probably a, a product officer of some kind that is going to be in charge of the roadmap for direct um my job right now is to be recruiting them <laughs> and ensuring that we have the cash <laughs> to recruit them uh so i don't want to take too much commitment onto the roadmap for direct uh because if it is a success then definitely there will be other people in, in charge of it and we can have town halls for direct booking exclusively um, and that will be actually pretty fun to have. 
No, that's amazing. Uh, I heard you speak a little bit about your features for premium, and those are all features that I am definitely looking for um, as like a, a new host for sure. Um, awesome. I think that you answered my question pretty clearly. I think it seems like you guys have it as an ancillary product or ancillary feature for some of your premium offerings that would just kind of naturally show up I think in, that's in your product. That should be natural. But hey, I, I think that's something we can circulate. We will circulate with Sam in any case, uh, who is working, who is going to be working on, on payments in particular. Got it. Um, so your premium offerings, you said that was going to be like Q1 of 2022, you said? I, yeah, I, I think definitely for, for objective, our objective is to be building it first. I think it's really mm -hmm. the payment processing and making sure yeah. that everything is aligned on this. Then it's really integration with autos is virtually already there. And the insurance uh, is the, the missing piece, but really what we have to do here is facilitating, facilitating a claim. So okay. the, the reality of building here in our company is really providing that we don't have specific issues with third party platforms, then really we will be pushing ahead onto, uh, onto, uh, onto direct. That's what we believe, is, that is the, the main gap. So the faster everyone is migrating to Airbnb official, the better it will be for everyone in our engineering team. And that will mean definitely uh, faster featured, faster features being delivered on, awesome. uh, on direct. Awesome. Okay. Great. Thank you so much for you, for your, all your insight. Maybe I'll apply to your uh, product officer role too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that, you. Please feel free. Please do. We have a big problem. We need to hire a lot of people. Um, so you may be a fit. I don't know. All right. Awesome. You seem to Thank be asking so good questions. Time. Appreciate it. Okay. I th Thank you very much, Kent. Uh, I think we've invited quite a few people, but they're not just responding right now. Oh, so, please. okay. Sean is joining finally. Uh, <laughs> okay, and I'm going to turn uh, ends off. Sean, you wanted to have another question for us? Yeah, just one quick kind of question slash potential feature for the uh, Schlage um, integration you have. Yes. One thing that would be amazing is if in, under the notification settings, you could make it to where we can set up a notification the first time their code is used, aka meaning the guest is checked in. Good to know. I um, believe that's, that's, I don't know if that's something that we can do for Schlage, um, because I'm not sure we have that kind of, uh, that kind of information in particular, but that, that definitely would be a great thing. I would totally agree with you, but there are definitely technical requirements on the, on the, on the platform side, um, that we have to oblige. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Thought it was worth a shot. Appreciate it, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would love to have that happening. Okay. No problem. So we are having IQI solutions. Is there a logo? Good afternoon, guys. Uh, my name is Quentin. Uh, my business is IQI Solutions. Uh, thanks for having me again. I'm also new to the product, but uh, really impressed with what I've seen thus far. And quite frankly, uh, even more impressed with uh, your, your community and the way you're engaging. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, I, I have two questions, actually. Uh, one is kind of a follow-up on the ability to process payments. Um, and, and it ties to uh, kind of the communication with uh, the cleaning team. So uh, will there also be an ability to uh, process payments to uh, the cleaners as well? That's so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want to do for 2022. Uh, so I, honestly, I, I don't want to kind, of, to kind of provide more updates on that, but you, so you basically want to pay your cleaners from hospitable is that what you mean that, that, that is completed? right uh, right right now i have a process where uh, they work through a, a checklist and once complete the, the, uh, the payment is automatically made to them uh, but i would love to have that all in one location and right now i use two apps for that so that is definitely why we're fundraising <laughs> so that's the extra uh, above everything that we kind of contemplated um, so what we uh, what we are contemplating for uh, as early as we can, as soon as we're basically solid and robust on, on direct, and we're taking a bit of time on our, on our on our product to consolidate and get into kind of uh, working our order, um, is building that marketplace of service providers. Um, we believe we we believe we work extremely well with property owners, real estate investors. We are working on self-managing their uh, their their properties, self-managing their short-term rentals, 
um, they need still to recruit a team. They still need to recruit um, their their cleaners. They may need to. They may be interested in recruiting someone uh, that is going to be a virtual assistant. Is going to be interacting with the guys. They may need to recruit an accountant. Sometimes maybe a lawyer. Uh, they may need to recruit someone that's going to help them uh, to um, to advertise uh, for their marketing uh, for their marketing website. All sorts of jobs, including you know property management companies. Uh, you know, I'm going to be in Thailand, who is going to be managing my property in Nashville. I'm going to be completely out of reach. And for once, I don't want to have to manage anything. I just want to have uh, a property management company managing my property for uh, for a few more weeks while I'm enjoying my time off. Um, so really, there are a lot of features that are going around that. There is a very different value proposition that's what you expect from property management software. But ultimately, yes, I w my, my, what I want is making sure that uh, you, if you are a property owner and you're just getting started or you are looking to scaling, and if you are a property management company, you go to Hospitable for sourcing, managing, recruiting um, your, your, your team, running payroll and being able to, um, to yeah, grow your, grow your short-term rental business uh, in whatever way possible. So that really, I believe, is core to uh, will be core to the product of what Hospitable is about. End of 2022, that's really going to be a huge effort, and so definitely we'll still be uh, building that in public. Uh, and that's what I was referring to earlier about uh, in terms of operations rebuilding. It's not just sending notifications. Actually, that's pretty stupid. Um, it's just really recruiting and managing your, your team. Um, the notification part, that honestly should be up to your to your people to know what exactly do they want to receive, uh, not for you to configure. So that's that's really going to be a very interesting, uh, very interesting development, and we uh, will be recruiting <laughs> for that, uh, and we keep uh, pushing uh, updates on that as soon as we're finished with Direct. And there is definitely a very busy roadmap for Direct already, um, so we want to keep expanding the scope of the product. Indeed. Well, well, thank you for that insight and sharing that vision. Um, yeah. my, my second question is actually around pricing. Again, I'm new to the tool. Um, so yeah. if, if there's something or an article or something like that that you suggest I read, uh, by all means, just let me know. But um, you I, have, I wasn't... Yeah. You, sorry, sorry to, I'm, I'm interrupting. Oh. There are a lot of resources. So when you are on, to the, on uh, the hospitable application, um, you can go to help, uh, which is on the purple bar on the on your left side, and then you can access really all our product documentation. You can search for it, and if you scroll down, you can actually access everything about every different section of a product. What you can do too, uh, obviously, is contacting support, but you also have on top of this, you have uh, the onboarding checklist that basically tells you and guides you into steps that you may take to kind of continue with your onboarding of a product, and you can. The onboarding checklist, sorry, can show you how. So you can click on that and just simply go run through those interactive product tools that make you click on certain spaces so that basically you can move along with the product, hopefully uh, a bit easier than doing it on your own. And you can discover what Hospitable can do for you. And I think you should also look at your email uh, because you can also be invited to a Q&A session that is managed with their support team um, so the idea is that you can then um, you can then join uh, a Q and A session where, that is a live session with uh, with Jen, and I believe Alisa too, um, where you can uh, you can exchange with them and just ask your questions in a, in a group setting. So that basically can help you uh, get your question answered, and that's something that can be beneficial to everyone uh, during uh, setting uh, setting things up. So, so yeah, no, thanks for that. You're welcome. And you can, if you if you don't know how to find any of those resources, send an email support at hospitable.com, or you can go again to help and just contact support, uh, so you can definitely get access to a, a brilliant Alisa and Jen that are on the call uh, that are on the download right now. Um, so th thank you very much uh, for for that question. That's a great opportunity to kind of end the call. Now, that's not going to be just the end of the call, uh, because I do have to shout uh, Nikita, uh, because that is actually going to be his last panel. Nikita, you still yeah. with me? Uh, wrong wall, I'm eating something. <laughs> In the middle of you eating something. So it's no drama. It's no drama. 
<clears throat> so what's your plan for the next few weeks? Uh, so yeah, PR is correct. This is going to be my last town hall, and that's because um, this is my last week at Hospitable. So don't panic. This is not a as big a bombshell as that sounds. Um, uh, I basically reached a point where where I, I felt like, for, for personal reasons, I, I needed to, uh, to to step down and um, kind of, and make a few changes, uh, kind of personally. <clears throat> um, yeah. So um, this is the first time we're announcing this publicly. Yeah, and we thought it would be it would be good to announce it um, on the town hall to kind of a few customers to make it more intimate. Uh, but yeah, mm, I am leaving uh, hospitable in some very good hands, uh, uh, obviously with with uh, Kia but uh, with the rest of the team as well. And the the, the people that we're about to hire, um, we're going to get um, a great, even, even bigger team um, forming in the next few weeks and months. So um, no no worries on on kind of business continuity and technical uh, engineering continuity either. My plans, uh, I'm taking it easy for uh, the next six, seven weeks, something like that, just to kind of reset, recharge, and to figure out what's next for me. Uh, but yeah, it's been a journey. Journey um, For those that, I mean, most of most people on this call will not know. Yeah, I joined as the first engineering hire back in early 2018. Uh, Matthew and I have a bit of an internal joke contest, contest, contest who actually joined first. Uh, he technically did a week before me, so he is technically That's, the first. It's amazing uh, that you still you still bring it up. It, it just yeah. like, <laughs> there is a competition. It, 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 it doesn't matter. It's, 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 it's an eternal it's joke. A friendly uh, joke. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I was the first technical hire. Uh, I just joined as a full stack engineer, and uh, one of the first things I worked on was actually the calendar back in our very old interface <laughs> that not many people on this call will, I think, actually even, even remember. Um, yeah, making performance improvements and then very quickly moved on to uh, integrating Verbo. So what you take for granted now, uh, that was very much a new thing uh, three three years ago. Uh, so yeah, I've been at Hospitable back then, Smart BB for just under four years now. Um, yeah, I went from, from developer to kind of a lead developer and then to a CTO uh, with, with a, a growing engineering team. So yeah, it's been a, quite a journey and uh, I do have to say um, <clears throat> I very much grateful for for the, for the opportunity that I provided and, and for, for the growth uh, that I've seen both for myself and for for the team and for the business. It's been it's been amazing, and I look forward to seeing from the outside now uh, where where Hospitable is heading. Um, and as I as I mentioned to to our team as well when when I announced this internally, uh, do not take this as a as a kind of negative signal. Uh, it's nothing to do with the business. It's very much a personal decision and. Uh, I still very much believe, kind of, in the long-term vision that we've we've been hinting at more and more over the last few town halls, kind of where what the end game kind of potentially is for for Hospitable. Um, no, no, knowing what the plans are for like the next, I don't know, five to ten years, basically, it's it's pretty exciting uh, to, to see Hospitable reach that uh, point eventually. Yeah. 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 It's been quite some time. Thank you so much, Nikita, for everything that you and that you've been building for, I think you, when you started, how many customers were there? I think 200, maybe 300 max. Yeah, a few, a few hundred, yeah. So we have, we are going to be passing 4,800 probably by, by the end of the week. So that was definitely quite a journey and definitely a lot of it is really due to you and your resilience in, uh, in front of problems from left and right. It's very funny that actually the, the thing that you started doing is actually the, probably one of the last things that you've been doing as well, which is really calendar improvements. I said, yeah, that's, 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 that's came full circle. Yeah, that's you're right. true. <laughs> so in the beginning, in the beginning, it was really because the product, I mean, I built the first version of the product, but I kind of completely forgot about the idea that tables in my SQL had indices. So, you know, that's the first thing that literally Nick has been doing. So there was a bit of a, <laughs> there was yeah, a lot so of things funny. to, yeah, to get back funny. to basics. <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, and, and I think, um, yeah, I think you were, you, I mean, obviously you've been absolutely amazing and stellar at any occasion, whether professionally or personally, I think you brought a lot, uh, in terms of the engineering culture for, uh, for everyone that is an engineer currently at the company or has been an engineer at the company in the, in the past few years. Uh, and I think definitely you are an extremely kind, extremely generous individual. Uh, that has always been spending a lot of time and taking matters uh, matters extremely seriously. Uh, and yeah, I'm very happy to have you as my first CTO. Uh, 
odds, you know, to, to still kind of uh, move that page. Um, but yeah, now uh, the, there is definitely a much better understanding as to what we need to go for uh, yeah. in terms of in terms of reach, in terms of engineering, and yeah, it's okay to ask whether you're up for it and you can do it, and you know, kind of be committed to it for for the next few years about it. Um, so it, it's something that has been prepared internally and will still be prepared. Um, actually, yeah, Nikita will probably be, if needs be, uh, coming back in a part-time capacity, just really uh, helping with the onboarding of the next engineering uh, engineering leader in the company. And we're really looking for, uh, for someone that can help uh, grow the team, facilitating the processes, facilitating really the, the ability to, to work in the company. And that's something that um, that we need to move to the next to the next chapter. I mean, you've heard me promise things left and right. There is a point where definitely engineering needs to be ready to say yes, and the engineering will need to be uh, needs to be absolutely stellar on that. I think we did a, we did a great job, uh, and but uh, the, clearly the, the scope of the ambition for the next few years is is so monumental um, that we yeah that's 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 totally fair. Uh, to decide to step in on, on it or not. Um, so <laughs> I'm bad at this. I'm bad at this. There is really nothing that can be good about it. Ruby Mist, come back, see you in January. You're invited on the next retreat. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll be okay. You'll be okay. Everyone will be okay. We're all going to make it if anyone's in need. We're all going to make it. Well, we're all going to make it. Wag, Wag me. me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you Nikita thank you everyone if you want to send Nikita an email uh, you can still do so it will have a lifetime email address anyway Nikita at hospitable.com you can reach out to him he's a really nice guy um, and uh, yeah thank you thank you so much thank you so much everyone for attending to this channel uh, we'll be looking forward to showing you new faces on the next